Fourth quarter at Laramie. The Cowboys trail at Utah State 24-13, but uh, something to celebrate. On their last drive, they scored a touchdown, something they hadn't done offensively since late September. And now they're facing a second down and six on their own 16-yard line. Drew Goodman, Seth Bonner, Taylor McGregor. Gorgeous day on homecoming in Laramie. And here's a little boot. And in the flat, it is complete for a couple of yards to the tight end Tyree Mayfield. Second catch for Mayfield. He's a senior from St. Joseph, Missouri. Third down and four for the young quarterback. Sean Chambers. He replaced a young quarterback, Tyler Vanderwall, a redshirt freshman. And Chambers is a true freshman. Utah State showing uh, pressure. They're going to bring four. And escape. It's Chambers. Kept his feet long enough to get the first down out to the 27 yard line. Tell you what, had he not stumbled, he may have gotten that to the boundary. You know, his explosive first step, man, he's, he kind of fits this offense and kind of understands how it's supposed to flow, especially with him being a, a heavy runner within the offense. I mean, it's just had a different kind of bite to it with him in the ballgame. Well, they moved the chains, and, and that's something they have really struggled to do, not only today, but all season long. And Chambers here gets strung out. Going to probably lose a yard. But I'll tell you what, Chase Christiansen, David Woodward, Tipa Nalei, they're going to have to go to the uh, equipment manager on Monday in Logan and get new shoulder pads, man. They're going to wear those things out. It's been a physical, physical battle up front, and, and you have to give credit to the Cowboys' offensive line. They've done a nice job of really just staying in the game plan or with the game plan and battle. Then zone read, Chambers lowers lowers his uh, pad level, gets it out to the 30-yard line. Woodward there, number nine, business administration major. All Mountain West Conference academic team a year ago. Very, very quiet, they say. Just leads by example. Well, his example is he makes virtually every tackle. <laughs> He is a, I mean, great size, 6'2", he's 235 and doesn't look it. No, he's put together pretty good, isn't he? Third down here, Evans trying to bounce it. Breaks a tackle for a moment, got pretty close. Stopped a yard short. It's good use of the stiff arm. Yep, Aaron Wade hung on and made the tackle. Wade prevented the first down and now Punting unit has to come on for Wyoming with 12:21 with the clock going in the fourth quarter. This will be Dante Crow. We've seen Ryan Galovich a couple of times punt in situations where they're trying to get a coffin corner. This is not a deep punt at all. Fair catch by Nathan at the 33-yard line. 12:05 to go, fourth quarter. 24-13, Utah State. Mountain West Football and AT&T Sportsnet is brought to you by Blue Federal Credit Union. Learn about our Sky High Savings account at bluefcu.com slash sky high. And by the Wyoming Department of Transportation. The Wyoming Department of Transportation reminds you to buckle up every drive, every time. With Seth Botter and Taylor McGregor and our AT&T Sportsnet crew, I'm Drew Goodman. Darwin Thompson is next to Jordan Love, and he's going to get the football here. Yeah, not much. Hard to run against the Cowboys. We'll get an update uh, on an injury from Taylor. Yeah, guys, he came out, looked like just a left ankle injury. He got it retaped, tested out on the sidelines, and he's good to go. He's back in there. Talking about Jordan Love? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Jordan Love. No, Tyler Hall. Tyler Hall. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't catch that. So Tyler Hall is back in there. Gaffon made the tackle. Hey, I tell you, 
not having again. You can't say it enough. Dax Raymond, a guy that's going to go match up on a linebacker safety, and it's going to be a mismatch. They're trying to find that guy today. They haven't been able to find the guy to separate and win. They're going to run on third and long and not much. A couple of yards. They're going to have to punt the football. Logan Wilson again was there defensively. The junior from Casper. And this is this is literally Thompson not sticking with the play. He's got a pulling guard to the left side. They have the entire left side cave down. All he had to do is follow his blockers. Thought he saw a little window to the right side there. Cuts back into trouble. There's a couple of things that have, that have surprised me about Utah State today. They get so prolific offensively. Jordan Love, we watch a lot of tape on Jordan Love. He throws a really pretty pass. He, he's been off today. And, and, you know, listen, everybody has an off day. But what what has really surprised me is that they haven't taken any vertical shots. It's a big part of their M.O. under David Yost, who, who is a wizard offensively. He's a guy that was with Mike Leach. He's, he's a guy that's been a lot of places and, and, and been with really innovative coaches. Gary Pinkle at Missouri, innovative off offensive minds. And we haven't seen much of that so far. And Wyoming's defense has something to do with it. They, they do, but you also got to understand that his, when he throws most of his deep shots, there's Coach Yost right there. Fun guy to talk to, man. He is an open book. Oh, he's great. Uh, he's an open book. He's outstanding. And, you know, the interesting thing is, most of his deep balls, they don't throw a lot outside. They don't throw a lot of deep balls outside. They don't have that guy on the edge that's going to go and, you know, they have a Savon Scarver that they can put in there and run those kind of routes, but they don't have a burner outside. They're usually your tight end and your slot guys, Vaughn's going down the seams. But even Ron Quavy and Tarver, who's big target, 6'3", 215 pounds. We've seen him throw 50-50 balls. He's got to gotta win. He's, he's got to win. Conway back inside his own 15-yard line. There's Tarver. And this is returnable on a hop. Did he signal for a fair catch? He must have because whistles are going to terminate this. And it'll be Wyoming football at their 18-yard line. Conway feels like Whatever he did was he said misinterpreted. His hand, he said his hands went away, like, get away, get away. And that's, what, that's what he was The receiver to. made a waving gesture, therefore the play was shut down when he possessed it. I mean, that's not a fair cat signal, even close. Signal. That's, that's got to be over your head. That's not even close. And that's, a, you know, that's an early whistle, let's just put it that way. That's probably one and, of those. And, he, and he, had, he had, as you can see, an opportunity to run. I anticipated that happening. The call, anticipated making that call. Chambers across the 20 to the 22 yard line. Two possession game for Wyoming. Cowboys averaging just. Uh, a little more than 15 points a game this year. There's 129 FBS teams, and those 15.7 they average, 128 the points per game of the 129 teams. Get a lead block in Chambers. We'll lean forward close to a first down. Chambers got two snaps in the first half, fumbled on his second one on a carry. But he has played all but one snap in the second half. The first snap was a Tyler Vanderwall interception in the flat, which led one play later to a short touchdown run from Thompson. He has, with his legs, given Wyoming some life. A lot of life. The injection they needed, I'm sure. Nico Evans is thankful that he's back there with him right now because it's just providing an extra blocker for him. Yeah, good point. Nico Evans had a real productive second half. 
And down the middle, that is complete. Evans, big opening. Inside the 25, and he lost the ball late. Was he down? They're going to mark him down. DJ Williams finally made the tackle. A great throw and run, Chambers to Nico Evans. And that required a little touch. Very much touch because there's a linebacker in the slot. And he's going to come out here, or yeah, right around through here and up the seam. And you got to be patient on it. Watch the tight end cross to give him that look. And just drops it in there, teardrop. That was awesome throw, perfect throw. Yeah, I think Nico, he, Nico Evans felt the ball coming out, said, you've been there, right. and, and he, he, yeah, shut he, he, he shut it down. Yeah, he, he went to the turf down. to try yeah. to make sure he got a knee down. Watch here. They're going to review this upstairs. Did it come out? Yeah, See, I, I think he's down. He's down. He's it comes down. out after. Yeah. But he shut it down. He stopped trying to run once he felt it, as you talked about. If it holds up with Wyoming possessing the football, it'll be an advance of 47 yards. Really impressed with that throw by I, I am the too, kid. because, you know, it's over a linebacker, a lengthy player, a guy that can, can make some plays is underneath it, so you got to get it up and over without throwing it over his head. It's great throw, great design and better execution yeah there's no I don't, I don't he, know, there's not enough to overturn yeah because on, on the field it was ruled wyoming football down by contact and i don't again i don't think there's enough there where you could say the ball was out already no did you do you think for one second that utah state thought coming in here that this is what would be going on right now because i don't for one no. second they were a confident bunch. And, and well, and they not, should be. And not arrogant by any means, but they were confident in just the way they were executing their offense and taking care of business. And there were a whole lot of Cowboy fans that, that said, uh-oh, 30 my, seconds into the game. I, I have a, a one of my best friends is, a, is an alumni, alumnus here. After and, further review, the ruling on the field of the runner down by rule is confirmed. First down. Is an alumnus here, and he texts me 52-3, to three, and I'm like, I don't think so. He goes, you know, I don't think so. Your defense can still play. Yeah, and what we're referencing is three plays into the football game today. Darwin Thompson had a 56-yard run for a touchdown. As well as early in the third quarter, they got another cheapy free touchdown, an easy one. That was at the short field. They had to go just three yards after the interception thrown by Vanderwall. Evans. Actually, that's not Evans in there now. That's uh, 23. Anderson on the tackle. Xavier Holiday. Valaday. Valaday gets one carry and enough uh, of a breather for Nico Evans, and he's back in there. What a great story, Nico Evans. Three years of watching other guys play. He went into spring ball, and he wasn't the starter in the spring initially. Chambers, not much. That's a physical tackle. Chambers, I mean, for a freshman, talk about being a strong kid. I mean, he's taking and giving a pounding right. he, he's, on just about he's, every play. He's, he's not, delivering also. Yes, absolutely. Not just the recipient. They'll go empty. Evans flanks left. Six coming. Quarterback draw. He's got the edge. Chambers inside the 15. Inside the 10, depending where they marked him out. It may be first and goal. DJ Williams got him out of bounds. Watch how he gobbles everybody all inside. This is an inside run here. And they blitzed in the A game. Right, and just because he's patient, and again, a, another bad angle taken there by Gage Ferguson. You've got to keep him inside of you. First and goal, 10 yard line. 24 13, 706, 705, 704 to go in the fourth quarter. 
Evans toward the goal line. Stop just shy. John Trell Rockamore got him down. I mean, what do you what do you do with this guy, Drew? What do you do with that guy? Because you're circling the, Sean Chambers. The idea is to do what with him? Redshirt him. Well, he, I know like, what you're referring to. There's five games left. You can play in four with the new uh, rules. I mean, this guy looks like he is. Ball start. Offense number 81. Five yard penalty. Man, second that's down. That's real costly. You just wipe that five of that eight yard gain you had so instead of second and goal at the three we're going to move it back to about the seven and a half nine penalties against wyoming totaling 70 yards and some are, are of the sloppy variety the ones that drive coaches especially on the <laughs> offensive side like coach bull uh, nuts anytime, all starts anytime you get a penalty after you've had success on a drive you're you're, you're just slowing yourself down Chambers, high low read, late throw, incomplete. He was trying to find Price, and it'll be third and goal. And here's the deal: you need you need 11 to get even if you're if you're Wyoming. So if yeah, they don't score on this next play, you can take the three because right. you're going to need three at some point. And your defense is playing lights out like they have been all day. And you still got time on the clock: 6:07. Seven, have two timeouts. Seven for 17 on third down. Double slot on third and goal. Chambers spilled at the four-yard line. Good tackle in the middle by David Woodward. Redshirt sophomore from Olympia, Washington. And the fans don't like it, but it's you the need right, It's the right call. You need the three anyway, and that, that tells me you don't understand what's happening if you're booing your coach for getting the three points. Well, that's a nice tackle by Woodward as well as Chris Jansen. You need the three points here. This is the right call. Short field goal is good from Cooper Roth. 24-16 within one possession now is Wyoming. 24-16, Utah State leading. Today's connect connection of the game is brought to you by Union Wireless. And Nico Evans on a beautiful throw from Chambers. 47 yards on that hookup, and that set up the field goal you saw moments ago. That was a good angle on that throw from uh, the young kid, Sean Chambers. You know what the difference in this game right now is, by and large? Two plays. The save on Scarver, 100-yard kick return, and the interception by Rockamore on the first play of the third quarter, and he returned it to the three-yard line. Here's Scarver again from the goal line. Oh, that's going to be... That's going to... That, that could draw some late. He was slammed out of bounds on the sideline late. And there, there's too much gold there for me to tell you if there was a flag thrown. You looked for yellow and you saw the whole uh, Wyoming sideline. But evidently, I believe there was a flag. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 81 of the receiving team. Penalty will be half the distance to the goal. It'll be first down Utah State. Penalty, That's number 81's first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. The penalty's called on him, Drew, but Gunnar Gentry slams him out of bounds. Like right here, and just throws him into the rest of the guys, then throws his hands up, so he takes a swipe at him. But you're always taught what? They get the second guy, right? And there it is right there. They always get the second guy. And now Wyoming shuts down the run on first down. Utah State, well, they've been in control of this game throughout, but they want to put some first downs together. Tight bunch trips into the boundary. Second down and nine for Jordan Love. Clock a wide before the snap, inside five minutes to play. This is essentially quads. You got an H back on the same side as well. 
Underneath handoff, and a decent game for Gerald Bright before he was upended by Marcus Epps. Good hesitation move by Bright. Marcus Epps, sort of mention this, first three-time captain in the history of Wyoming football. Does that tell you a little about that young man? Wow. Captain is a sophomore, a junior, and now in his senior year. A lot working play clock right now. Third down and five. This is huge for Wyoming. They've got to stop here. They're going to get great field position. Stick route, close to a first down, and then with the stretch, I believe he got it. First down. It was Aaron Vaughn. That's a long way for your linebacker to have to go to get out to him. You had your safety soft because it was three receivers to that side. And now an official timeout to mark the football. Wow, this, where they're spotting the ball now, I don't know if he got it. It's right, it's right at the same mark. So he should be just at it. Is the nose? That's one inch, literally. They may look at this upstairs. The replay official is David Ames. The previous play of the runner short of the line to gain is under further review. And it's pretty automatic. We talked to David Ames before the game. We talked to him a little bit at halftime. If it is a, if it is a line to gain situation on third down, it's almost automatic. They need to get it across the 12. There's the tackle and then the lean forward. That's why I think it's a bad spot. Yeah, it is a he, he, he's, at, he's at about the 12 and a half yard line. You know, when he, when he finished rolling, he was at the 13, but he was at the 12 and a half. 23. Or excuse me, the 23. Thank you, 22 and a half. And he needed to get to the 22. See him just sit down in the zone. It's a that, good, sure tackle. Yeah, that, that angle's not going to show it as well as the other angle. Side. But I don't know, is there enough to change this spot? One. Okay, he's, he's, still, he's still up, he's and he past, lunges forward. He's past the 22, like completely past it. Yeah, I mean, he's closer. Not to, even, he's, it's not even close. He's right, closer he's, to the 23 right, than the 22. That, that should be a Utah State first down. Obviously, if you don't get it, you've got to punt the ball here. You don't want to give even to a, a team that has been struggling but has found a little little offensive groove. You don't want to give them a short field. So yeah, I know a lot of people who would hey, well, it's one inch. If, if the the play stands up, the marking stands up. But with after viewing the play. The runner did make the line to gain. He was beyond the 22-yard line. It'll be first down for Utah State. And, that, and that's the right call. Uh, but but I think what, what nobody ever takes into account is there's no guarantee that you gain yardage. You can actually lose yeah, yardage. Absolutely. A lot of bad can happen. Right. And, and there's no way you could. Not from Had here. they not gotten it, it's automatic punt. So a big first down for Utah State. 404 to go. Love with Bright next to him. And again, this is about the play clock because the game clock is moving once they reset the football. Five seconds. Did a good job working the clock. Bright. No gain. 
Obviously, Darwin Thompson, who is, their, who is the stronger of the two, hasn't been back in the ballgame since he came hobbling off or since he was helped off. And this is all about working the play clock down inside of five seconds before each snap. Second and ten. Bright. Again, no game. His biggest concern has to be ball security. Wingard combined with Malawiya to bring him down. Thinking with Craig Ball, two timeouts. He's trying to save him for the offensive side of the football. Oh, Tyler, Tyler Hall and Tarver were going at it down here, Drew. Do you put it up here if you're Utah State and uh, Coach Yost? I mean, why not take a shot? They're not going to do it. They're going to lose a bunch of yards here. A loss of three on that play. It's Gaffan tackling Bright. So Utah State went backwards after that initial first down. Wyoming's going to get the football. They call timeout with 2.14 left. They're going to have all kinds of time. Down a touchdown and a two-point conversion late in the fourth quarter on homecoming in Laramie. Time for today's results from our CenturyLink High Speed Challenge. Said Bonner turned 50 yesterday, so had you celebrate your 50th birthday party, let it pass quietly. <laughs> and the, and that's uh, what we did. <laughs> or dream vacation, very close. And before the punt, we had a whistle. The ball had not been made ready for play yet. We'll reset it. I mean, they don't call this the Larry Dice for no reason. So punting from inside his 10-yard line is Taylor Heinze. Conway from his 33. And this is going to cost Wyoming maybe twice. There was an initial flag against Wyoming, and then a late flag that is almost always Number seven. on the return team. Number seven. During the return, holding, receiving team number seven, be a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Charles Pownell Jr. You're gonna see right there, and then he doesn't let go. He held him twice. Twice. He got two good ones. David Woodward was uh, the guy he held. That's probably the only that's, way you're gonna keep Woodward from not being involved in a tackle by holding him, right? That's that's the other way to get caught right away is to throw your hands up in there like I didn't do it. <laughs> That's the other way to get caught immediately. So here's the deal. 2.02 <laughs> left. Wyoming has to traverse 75 yards with a true freshman quarterback. Now he's out of there. It's Tyler Vanderwall back in. And he, did, he was trying to set up a screen. He, he threw that before he looked because there was nothing there. He almost threw it right into the belly of Leilula. Watch Leilua. Well, he's trying he's, to throw it to, to many to, to Mayfield. Mayfield and he but, Leilua is in front of Mayfield I, I don't I maybe hopefully Chambers is okay but he's been the reason you've been able to get things going he's been the reason you've been able to get things going no catch offensively so to me there has to be has to be something. He's got to be. It, 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 in all fairness to the other kid, with Tyler Vanderwell, well, this is tough. He hadn't right. played now in an hour at right. least. Right. And now go win the game for us? Right. That's tough. 
Well, maybe Chambers isn't up to speed on the two minute. He's got his hat on on the sideline. I mean, that could be. And now it's fourth down and 10. Mayfield was the intended target. See, and this is just not anticipating. You know a guy's coming across. Get yourself set and ready. He tries to wait to the last second and throw it as hard as he can, and he's kind of retracting because there is pressure. It's tough to stand in there. But just open yourself up and throw a nice little ball out in front of him. Let him run with it. Fourth and ten. They bring six. Will protected, and it's dropped by Conway. He would have had the first down. The ball was a little bit behind him. He shook free. He was all alone. And now Wyoming will turn it over on downs. 145 left. This is There's tough. one timeout for the Cowboys. Utah State now in great position to seal this thing. This is tough, and I believe this is Conway here. Going to just slide right under, let everything clear, slide right inside. And he's got it also throttled down. He can't be coming through there too quick. It's just a little under route, but he's got to slow down, throttle down a little bit because there's so much space he's in. You could almost sit it down in that zone. Thompson back in there. And now Utah State, even without a first down, probably is in uh, a wonderful spot. If they pick up four more yards, they can just put a knee down after that. So Utah State got a scare. You give Wyoming credit. They did not go away in the second half. They got a lift from the 18-year-old uh, quarterback, Sean Chambers. And you, you were talking about this a little while ago. And Craig Bowl has, after today, four games left. The new rule again, you can maintain a red shirt if you play in four games. Play, you play four full games and still get a red shirt. And it's changed. And it's not the early part of the season. It's any time. And Wyoming is going to drop to 2-6 and six and 0-4 oh and in conference play. It's been a tough year for the Cowboys. And, you know, they're going to get ready for their arch rival, the Colorado State Rams, next week. But I, I can't imagine by one game burning a kid's red shirt. So you may play him a lot, but there may be one game where I'm sorry he's not going to play, right? For sure. There, there's no way. I mean, I... I liked what I saw from him, his poise. The moment wasn't too big for him at all. And you're not dismissing the other no, young kid, and Tyler Vanderwolf. They're still Wall. young. They're Absolutely. both still young, and they're still learning how to play the position. Let them go compete yes. and continue Absolutely. to grow. Absolutely. And, and listen, if those are your two worst problems, you're all right. Yeah. You're doing all right if you're Wyoming. 56 seconds left. Wyoming's now out of timeouts. Third down and two for Utah State. Got to give a lot of credit to this Wyoming defense. They were outstanding today. And Thompson is going to lean ahead with some help from the big fellas up front for a first down. And the Utah State Aggies are going to win for the sixth consecutive week. And they did get all they wanted from the Cowboys. It's going to be a 24-16 final. Their only blemish this year was a 38-31 loss in East Lansing to a very good Michigan State team to begin the season. And they outgained Michigan State in that football game. They had that game. They had it won. Yeah, and now for the Aggies, you know, moving forward, we told you that Wyoming's going to go to Fort Collins right down the road next week and uh, play for the bronze boot against their arch rival. And for Utah State, they have New Mexico at home. Then they travel to Hawaii. That'll be a tough one. They have San Jose State at home. We're going to see them again on November 17th in Fort Collins against Colorado State. With this Utah State Aggie team didn't play their best football offensively. Wyoming had a lot to do with that. But Coach Wells' team is now 6-1 and one and on the cusp of being ranked in the top 25. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know of another team, and, and that, that's no slap against Boise State or anybody. There's not another defense 
in this conference, I don't think. San Diego State, at times, there's yeah. not other defense that can match up with the veteran leadership and the experience that the Pokes have. And that showed true today. I mean, they gave Mr. Love all the fits he could want. I mean, he probably never wants to see them again. Yeah, it was, it was a tough outing for Jordan Love, who came in uh, spitting the football as well as anybody out west. Today's Drive the Game is brought to you by Wyoming, the Wyoming Department of Transportation. And two touchdown drives that uh, didn't take very long. Thompson on the opening drive of the game, and then after a 56-yard touchdown, he breaks the tackle and takes it in from three yards away. And this was the uh, the backbreaker. This is Savon Scarver. You want to talk about untouched? There was nobody ever within three or four yards of him. A hundred-yard kick return for Scarver. And Utah State. Wins the football game 24-16. And Coach Wells is with Taylor McGregor. Taylor? All right, Coach. You told us before this game that your team this season has a chance to do something special. They've now played seven games, coming here to Wyoming and winning this. What do you know about your team at this point in the season? Well, I think we're pretty strong-minded. Um, uh, tremendous performance, tremendous performance by our defense. Uh, big play on special teams. Defense has got to play great to win championships, and we're in a, we're in a hunt. Kept ourselves in a hunt. Didn't play real good on offense. Not a secret. Um, I'm, I won't trip out. That's the first time all year. Um, but you got to play championship level defense, and we did that today on the road. Big key to the win. Congratulations, okay, coach. Thank you very much, guys. All right, Taylor. Thanks very much. And we, and we talked about this a little bit in the fourth quarter, and you know. Shame on us if we don't mention it again as Coach Wells did. You know, we talked a lot about you know Wyoming is struggling with young quarterbacks trying to get going offensively. But you know what? That Utah State defense is pretty stout also led by their linebacker court. They are. They fly around. They're extremely athletic. These guys get it done as you see them there celebrating. Gage Ferguson with the Bridger rifle. These, these guys play hard. And they played throughout the game. They didn't get down. They made some mistakes, but they continued to battle. And, and as he stated, they play championship defense, which means you're walking out of the building with a win, even when things don't go your way. Yeah, yeah no, nobody asked how pretty it was. They're going to see on the schedule, people around the country, oh, Utah State won again. 24-16 in a place where it's uh, typically very difficult to win, Laramie, Wyoming. Well, for Seth Potter and Taylor McGregor and our entire AT&T Sportsnet crew, Drew Goodman saying so long from Laramie. Join us next weekend. We'll be in San Jose, California. We thank you for watching Mountain West Football and AT&T Sportsnet. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, everybody. 24-16, Utah State over Wyoming today.